Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today, we are going to learn about the ingest pipelines in Elasticsearch. You will learn what a pipeline is and when to use it. A pipeline allows you to transform data before it is indexed. For example, if you have some documents and created an index, you can pass them through an ingest pipeline before indexing. As I told you, Ingest pipelines can apply transformations like removing fields, converting text to lowercase. If you want to read more about the processes that Elasticsearch offers, click on this hyperlink. Pipelines can include multiple transformation steps. For example, here I am showing that the data will be transformed three times. For example, here you can lowercase the text, here you can add a field, and finally you can set a value. After passing all the transformations successfully, the documents will be indexed with no problems. But what happens if one of the steps fails? We will see this later. We use the ingest API to create or update a pipeline. You can do this by using the put pipeline method. You give it the ID, so this is how you identify your pipeline, and a description. And inside the processor's attribute or argument, you pass all the steps that you, you want your pipeline to execute. For example, I have the set transformation. This is going to set this field with this value. And I also have the lowercase process, which will lowercase the text inside uh, this field that I called field. So, here, this is just an example, but you should change this value with what you have in your documents. We can also simulate a pipeline. This is very important because before applying your pipeline to actual data, you need to test it and you use the simulate method to do that. Again, we provide the ID. The ID here is for the pipeline that we already created. So if I go back, I already created this pipeline. If I want to simulate it, I will take this ID and give it to my to the simulate method and after that i need to specify or to provide it with a documents so you can either pass one document or a documents list here for example i have two documents here you can see that i am passing some values like index id source but these values doesn't need to be actual values so you can put anything the most important thing is source the transformations are going to be applied just on the documents and after that in the response you will get the transformed documents and after that if you see that the transformed documents are correct then you can pass to execute the pipeline on real data here i have another implementation so if you don't want to pass the id you can give the pipeline directly inside the simulate method in this example i have just one process that lowercase the text so you can either choose this or this one with the ingest API, you can also delete a pipeline. This is very easy to do. You just call the delete pipeline method and you provide the ID. The same for get a pipeline. This will just return to you the pipeline. Again, you specify the ID to be able to do that. I mentioned before that what happens if one of the steps fails? This is something that can happen because pipelines may sometimes fail. If that happens, you have two options. You can either ignore or handle the failure. Here, for example, I have my ingest pipeline. I have executed the first step, that's great. But when I started to execute the second step, I got an error. So if I decide to ignore the failure, the pipeline will skip the step that failed. In this example, step two failed. So I'll just skip it and execute the third step. How to do this? It's very easy. Here, when creating the pipeline, you specify, for example, let's say that step two is is going to rename a field if you want to use ignore instead of handle you add ignore failure inside the process or inside the step so here ignore failure is set to true which means that if this step fails i will ignore it and just skip to the next one alternatively with the on failure parameter we can specify custom error handling steps such as logging the error or even retrying to execute the process or sending notifications I mean you can do a lot of things this ensures that the pipeline never stops 
and executes the rest of the, the steps. So for example, here step two did not execute well. We, we did get an error. So what we will do before executing step three, we will branch out and try to do anything that we have specified inside on failure. And then when we finish this, we go back and execute step three. To implement this again, inside the processors, you go inside the step and here you add on failure instead of ignore failure and here between brackets so this is a list inside this list you specify the number of steps that you want to execute for example if you want just to log an error inside this list you will have a step that will log the error if you don't want to execute anything you just specify an empty list and this will just catch the error but it will not execute anything and then it will move to step three. Now let's move to VS Code to see how to implement this. Open notebook number 19. You can see that we are going to talk about ingest pipelines in this one. Click on this link to read the documentation. There are a lot of things that ingest pipelines offer you and you will find that information there. Also, if you don't have the notebooks, please go to the video description. You'll find a link that will take you to GitHub and feel free to download the repository to get the notebooks and the slides. First thing, we need to connect to Elasticsearch. Then I'll start by creating the pipeline. This is very easy, as I told you, you use the ingest API. It provides you with the put pipeline method. And here you need to give your pipeline a unique ID. So this pipeline, it will just lowercase the case. This is why I give it this ID and a description. Inside processors, you specify the transformations. Here I have just one transformation, which will lowercase the text inside the field called text. If I run this, it gives me a knowledge true, which means that I was able to create the pipeline. Now, let me try to get the same pipeline. I use the get pipeline method to do that. And as you can see, I have my description and my processors. This looks good. If I want to delete the pipeline, I can just specify the ID and it returns to me true. As I told you, before applying the pipeline to real data, you need to simulate the behavior of the pipeline. But first, because I deleted the pipeline, I will recreate it. And here is how you use the simulate method. You provided the pipeline. So here you can either specify the, the ID of the pipeline that we created, or you can come here and type in pipeline and provide the pipeline here. After that, you need to provide the documents. Here, again, index, ID, does not matter. You can put anything here. The only important part is source because here you will provide the documents. And again, simulate method will not index the documents. It will just show you the behavior of the pipeline. So now, if you remember correctly, lowercase, this pipeline, it will lowercase the text. And I need to have a field called text. So this is what I'm providing here. This is the field, and this is the text that I have inside the field. So here you can see that I, it is uppercased. If I run this, it should be lowercased. And as you can see, you ha we have source, which is our document. Here is the field, and now the text is lowercased, which means that the pipeline was able to run successfully. When you use the simulate method and you don't get errors, this means that you are ready to, to use the pipeline in real data. But let's say that I have changed text to content and I rerun this. Now it gives me an error. Why? Because it says that field text is not present as part of path, which means that I told the, the lowercase pipeline to search for a field called text, but here I don't have that field. That's why the pipeline was not able to run successfully. And if you get this, this means that you are not ready to use the pipeline, the pipeline for real data. So this is how you use the simulate method. Now let, let me go back to text. You can see that now it is working correctly. Okay, so we simulated the pipeline. Now we can use it. But how you do that? Well, first let me read the data. Again, I am using the dummy data JSON file and I am uppercasing the text. You can see that the text here is uppercased for all documents. Let me create the index because I will run the pipeline and then index the, the result. Again, we are using the bulk API and here, here are the operations. 
we will index the document and the index expects the document as the next values. So I am specifying that. You can see that the bot API, before we were just using the operations, but now we are going to use the pipeline. So now what's going to happen? The bot API will take the document. It knows that it has a pipeline. It will feed the pipeline with that document. The pipeline will transform the document and then we will take the result and sort it in the index. You can see that the pipeline comes in between the data and the index. And if everything works correctly, and we have seen through the simulate method that everything went well, we should expect that this will not return any errors. And this is what we observed. You can see that error is set to false. And now let me print the documents to verify that the text was lowercase. Because remember, I have transformed the text when I was reading the JSON file to be uppercase. Now let me search for all documents inside my index and see how they, do, they look like. And as you can see, the text now is lowercase, which means that the pipeline did not encounter any issue. Now, sometimes the pipeline can fail. Let's say that you have your JSON file. All documents are good. You have the text field, but for one particular document, you don't have that text field. The pipeline will fail in this case. We can handle the failure. Let me show you the first case where we don't handle the failure, what happens? So here I am creating a new pipeline. I call it pipeline number one. And here this pipeline, it has multiple transformations, but does not handle failures. The first transformation is lowercase and the second one is set. So set searches for a field called text and it gives it this value. Let me run this. We were able to create the pipeline. Now I have a document that doesn't contain the text field. And remember, the first transformation expect to have that field. You can see that we get a bad request. Why? Because the lowercase process could not find the text field. So this is what happens if you don't handle the error. But now let's use the ignore failure and on failure parameters to handle the errors. Okay, so this is the second part, handling the failure. So here I call this pipeline pipeline 2. Here again we have multiple transformations, but this time we will handle or ignore the failures. Again, we have the same processes, we have lowercase and set. But for lowercase, I have specified on failure. And here I have a list. Inside this list, I can add other processes that will execute when lowercase fails. And here what I am doing, I am adding the text field. So set will add a new field if it does not exist and it will give it this value. And here, if set fails, I'll just ignore the failure and continue the execution. So now we have handled the error for the lowercase process. Now we can move to the next step and create a new field with this value. Now let's run this and see how this will work. Again, I have the same document, but this time I don't have and I don't have the text field. But this time I am using the new pipeline. You can see that this time the index operation did not encounter any problem. And if I run the search, you can see that I have a new document. So let's see what happens. Initially, we had just the title and created all fields. We have them here. So you can see that we have title and created all. But we have created two new fields. Why? Let's go back. First, we provided the document to the index method. The index method will take the document and feed it to the pipeline. The pipeline will take the document. It will try to lower cases, but it will not find the text field. So on failure will be triggered. And what it will do, it will set the text field with failed to lowercase. Let's see, we have text, the text field, and it said failed to lowercase. Good, we have finished with the first process, we will continue. We have another process, which will set a new field with this value added by pipeline. Let's verify if this is correct. You can see that we have the new field, and here is the value added by pipeline. So this is how we use pipelines, and this is how we handle errors if they occur. We arrived at the end of this video. I hope that it was helpful and informative. Please, before leaving, leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.